Before we begin, if this is the first time you visit to our channel, you consider to subscribe. Trust Dr. Channel Dr. Abed L. Wahed A.D. Dimer Test is a blood test usually used to help check for or monitor blood clotting problems. A positive test means the D-dimer level in your body is higher than normal and suggests you might have blood clots. What is being tested? This test measures the amount of D-dimer, which is normally undetectable, in your blood. Blood clots form whenever a blood vessel is damaged, whether that's by an injury or by atherosclerosis, or when blood flow is restricted, such as by a vessel being compressed for a long time. When you have an injury, your body creates a blood clot to stop blood from leaking out of your blood vessels. D-dimer is a type of protein your body produces to break down the blood clot. Why would I need this test? Your doctor might ask you to have this test if he or she suspects you have blood clotting problems or wants to rule them out. These blood clotting problems include Deep vein thrombosis DVT, clot formation in the veins, usually in the legs. Pulmonary embolism, a blockage in an artery in the lung. Disseminated intravascular coagulation, a condition that prevents your blood clotting normally. Blood coagulation caused by venom of certain species of snake, such as brown snake. Learn more about symptoms caused by snake bites. If you are undergoing treatment for disseminated intravascular coagulation, your doctor may use the D-dimer test to monitor your condition. How to prepare for this test? No preparation is needed for this test. A blood sample is taken from a vein in your arm. Understanding your results. A higher than normal D-dimer level might mean you have had a significant blood clot. However, the test does not tell where the clot was or what caused it. Other health problems can also cause the D-dimer level to go up. Therefore, the D-dimer test is not the only test used to diagnose a disease or condition. It is usually used with other blood tests and imaging scans. If the D-dimer test is positive, then you might be sent for imaging. A normal D-dimer level usually indicates a clotting problem. What does an elevated D-dimer in COVID-19 patients mean? Several studies from Wuhan have shown elevated D-dimer in COVID-19 patients as associated with higher mortality, although prophylactic anticoagulation in ICU patients in China was not common when these studies were performed. These studies provided little information on assays, unit types utilized. Although it is not clear what effect anticoagulation has on D-dimer levels in the setting of COVID-19, very low D-dimer levels are usually observed in patients receiving anticoagulation. Because D-dimer is a product of cross-linked fibrin, it is considered a sensitive biomarker to rule out venous thromboembolism. However, D-dimer has low specificity as there are many other conditions with ongoing activation of the hemostatic system in which D-dimer can be elevated such pregnancy, inflammation, malignancy, trauma, liver disease, decreased clearance, heart disease, sepsis or as a result of hemodialysis, CPR or recent surgery. When and how often should D-dimer be measured? There is not yet a consensus as to how D-dimer levels should be used for management and or monitoring of COVID-19 patients. Checking D-dimer on initial presentation in the emergency department, urgent care facility or outpatient clinic is appropriate. Based on available COVID-19 experience, see Table 2, a cutoff of greater than 1 microgram per milliliter may stratify patients at higher risk of poor outcomes. For hospitalized patients, there is no consensus regarding how often D-dimer should be measured, or how results should be acted upon with respect to anticoagulation. Are D-dimer result accurate in COVID-19 patients or are there confounding laboratory issues? The most common pre-analytical errors include inappropriate drawing techniques and inadequate transportation and or storage. Slow blood collection may cause hemolysis, therefore, a needle size of at least 19 to 22 gauge is necessary. Collection tubes should be maintained in a vertical position during transportation, although studies have shown that transportation via pneumatic tubes is acceptable. Stability for most assays is 24 hours. At room temperature but we recommend clinicians to adhere to individual lab policies. In the laboratory, we have experienced an increased frequency of clogged needles during D-dimer testing, needle 1, STAR max system, likely due to samples with very high D-dimer and fibrinogen concentrations. 
We recommend increasing the frequency of instrument maintenance and needle cleaning to at least once every shift to avoid this issue. The most common substances resulting in analytical interference with D-dimer levels are paraproteins, bilirubin, lipids and hemolysis. Post-analytical errors are less common but as mentioned above there is great confusion surrounding the use of different unit types and different magnitudes of units. Recent evidence for the utility of age-adjusted cutoffs has been published. Specific pregnancy and pediatric ranges have also been proposed. We recommend careful attention to these issues for proper interpretation of patient results and published studies, particularly if D-dimer levels will be used to guide changes in therapy.